Okay, so a little bit background about ourselves and where we are from, what we do. Uh, my name is Tamay Gowda. He is my friend Karanjit Singh. Uh, we both are graduate students at USC, uh, that's University of Southern California. Uh, we are uh, affiliated to a research group called Information Retrieval and Data Science, that's IRDS. Uh, our director, our mentor is Dr. Chris Matman. Uh, we are, uh, the main goal or the focus for our research group is uh, enhancing and developing uh, IR systems, data, data science systems for, which are open source. Uh, we have our uh, background from Apache Software Foundations. Uh, we ourselves are committers and PMCs in Natch, Tika, and Joshua. Uh, Dr. Matman is a director at Apache Software Foundation, so he probably are in uh, at least 20 projects in Apache, Pro Apache Software Foundation. Okay, time to uh, start Sparkler. So the agenda for this session, uh, we're going to go through uh, a brief overview of Sparkler. What is it? Uh, what is the motivation behind this? Um, so and then we go in depth and see what is there under the hood of Sparkler. Then we will have a brief overview of the future. So if you're going to start, if you're going to use Sparkler today, what, what do you get? And we also have a nice dashboard. We'll have a, uh, we'll have a quick uh, demo. Uh, that shows how easy it is to crawl using Sparkler and uh, what do you get out of from dashboard. Um, yeah, that's pretty much, and you can ask questions at the end. Okay, so let's do a quick poll. How many in the audience have ever used a crawler? Or do you know about crawler and you wanted to use it but you never got time? Great, so almost most of, the, most of the audience know Crawler, which is good. So as you know, a Crawler, basically it's a bot program. It can crawl across the links in the web and fetch resources. By resources, I mean it could be web pages, it could be images, it could be any, for any type of files on the web. So Sparkler, as the name's, name is a contraction of Spark Crawler. So it's a crawler that runs on Spark. Uh, it is inspired for, uh, from Apache Nutch. So some of you might be already knowing Nutch, which is a, a famous distributed crawler. If you trace back the history of Hadoop, Spark, and all, they all connect to Nutch because Hadoop was emerged out of Nutch. So when uh, they wanted to scale Nutch in a distributed fashion, they, uh, Hadoop was emerged. Um, so here, Sparkler is just like Nutch, but it runs on top of uh, Apache Spark. And we made it easy to use, easy to deploy. OK, so uh, let us understand the motivations why we wanted to build a new crawler. So the first motivation connects to DARPA MEMEX program. Uh, Dr. Matman uh, is a principal investigator of uh, MEMEX program. So MEMEX, basically, what is MEMEX? MEMEX is a program uh, started by DARPA to uh, build open source technologies for a specific domain, uh, to build IR systems for a specific domain. So one such focus is uh, uh, monitoring illegal activities on the web in deep and dark web. So uh, we face uh, some challenges here. Uh, Dr. Matman led this effort, and uh, Karanjit was uh, the person who's leading all the crawling efforts. Uh, we, were, we have evaluated so many crawlers, some of them doesn't scale, those who, which scale uh, have issues, so some of them are outdated. So we, we thought, okay, we need technology upgrade, we need, we need a better crawl. So considering the current situation in the big data community, uh, we, uh, we realized we can do a much better crawler if we start using uh, the recent advancement in big data, IR systems. So yeah, it's not just we who agree with this, uh, with this ideology saying we need technology upgrade. In fact, most of the people in the community agree. So uh, if you look at the enterprise clusters today, most of them are migrated from Hadoop MapReduce to Spark. And we too wanted to use Spark, take advantage of Spark, since most of our system is in Spark. So the second motivation from my side, uh, I am a co-founder of Detoin. Detoin is a startup. It's uh, 
uh, main goal is to build, uh, make it easy to build distributed text analytics applications. So uh, just like you might have already seen uh, many competitors doing, uh, uh, providing a framework where you can pull data from your, uh, your data sources and do analysis on their platform. So we had this input component where you can just connect, point out to some websites and say, get all the web pages or resources from this, scroll all the web pages and then do analysis you know, in the platform. So the uh, input component was powered by uh, Nutch. So we at late uh, 2014, we migrated our infrastructure to Spark. Uh, almost everything was migrated except the uh, crawler, which is uh, Nutch. So at that time, I felt, OK, we need a crawler that runs on Spark. And when I came to USC for my uh, graduate studies, I met Dr. Chris Matman, who taught web search in this class. And yeah, we both agreed we need a crawler. That is, uh, that is the motivation behind this. And so under the hood, we have uh, so many Apache projects. Though the name says it's a Spark crawler, uh, besides Spark, there are other Apache components connected, like Maven, Felix, Solar, Kafka, Tika, and Nutch. Let's go in depth and see how a crawling works on Spark. Um, we have a flow diagram. I know you won't be able to see this because of the font. Let's uh, dive into the crawl DB section. So uh, a little bit introduction about crawl DB. So when you are building a crawler, a crawler has to maintain its own internal data structure. So where it keeps track of all the URLs, what, what URLs are fetched, what are not fetched, what should be fetched, what is the priorities, et cetera. So CrawlDB is a database that keeps track of all this information. So we have kept uh, CrawlDB on Solar. Uh, later in the slides, we're going to discuss why we, what was the motivation, why we had to do it. Um, so when user says, go get resources, resources starting from uh, URLs, those URLs are called seed URLs, we inject them to CrawlDB, then there will be task on Spark cluster, uh, querying Solar, red, uh, getting them, and updating the status back. And we also have dashboards that connect to Solar and shows the statistics. Uh, the second uh, crucial part of the system is the partitioner. We have a custom made RDD uh, that uh, basically has a partitioning based on the host, that's because, let's say we have, a, uh, we have a huge cluster and trying to crawl a single site. Just because we have a huge cluster, we shouldn't uh, bring them down by making too many requests. So we, have, we, uh, we partition the URLs and figure out what is the ideal number of requests to send to specific host. That way we don't uh, bring them down like a DDoS attack or something like that. So we have a, a partitioner and uh, we then have a fetcher that fetches the URL based on the host. And then we have a parser that, uh, that figures out what are the outgoing links from this page. Then again, the cycle repeats. Uh, we then send it back to Solar uh, with a bunch of map, reduce, filter operations. So operations like uh, normalizing the URLs, operations like removing the duplicate URLs, operations like filtering the URLs. Uh, that way, our crawler, we can focus crawler to a specific domain, specific kind of resources on web. So uh, once we have this, uh, we understand that from our previous crawling experience, crawling is just one component in the system. There could be uh, many advanced machine learning pipeline following the crawler. So we made it easy to integrate. That way, just start the crawler, then connect with this for your application. So one of the features is uh, you can configure Kafka and uh, uh, register or subscribe to a Kafka topic. So, so our crawlers start producing the content into Kafka. That way you get the content and do additional analysis in your um, pipeline. So if Kafka is not required, it can fall back to the Nutch mode where it produces the sequence file compatible to Nutch format. So I'm handing over back to my friend Karanjit to go through features. Sure. Thanks, you, uh, Tame. So uh, now we have understood uh, the basic uh, workflow of a crawler that we have built. Uh, let's deep dive into the important features of Sparkler, uh, which are very essential uh, to understand. Uh, the first one is the crawl DB. Uh, so, as you already introduced, uh, you the 
the internal it is an internal structure and it is such a which crawler uses store the url statuses metadata of the pages it fetched um, there were two uh, primary challenges that we actually uh, thought while uh, building the crawl db one was it should be uh, accessible uh, with a visually appealing dashboard very easily and so that can provide some near real time uh, analytics on top uh, on top of the crawls that you are doing so so that you know uh, while you're crawling you should make out a, make out some sense uh, where the crawl is going and try to control if it's required uh, the another way was uh, as you might be knowing that uh, spark rdds are uh, not meant or advised for uh, asynchronous updates so we, what we did was we created a customized uh, RDD uh, in Spark, which, uh, which act as a proxy to uh, our solar crawl database. So any updates to, those, uh, to, the, to the RDD uh, will reflect in the solar index. Uh, so we have two implementations, uh, standalone and solar cloud. Depending on the use, uh, you can have that configured and run your crawls. The next feature is uh, the partitioning, which actually uh, derives from the reason of uh, crawl politeness or uh, fair fetching. So let's say you have to crawl uh, Wikipedia and you have a big cluster to go ahead with. Uh, so you don't want to overload uh, the Wikipedia server by hitting so many requests in parallel and in worst cases they might even block you. So a politeness is a big factor that needs to be there uh, in the crawler. Uh, we partition the URLs uh, based on the host names, uh, and then we uh, ask them to fetch in parallel with appropriate delays in between uh, the URLs for a particular host. Uh, in, in addition to this, we sort the uh, generated URLs by depth and score so that we follow a proper bet first search fashion. Uh, we start from seed URLs and iterate over the links that we get from the page in a BFS way. Uh, the another feature was the OSGI uh, plugin interfaces. Our, most of our interfaces are inspired by Nutch, but we have modeled it in a very different way using Apache Felix implementation of OSGI, which actually provides a different environment for each of the plugins, having their own uh, class loaders in those environments so that any of their dependencies uh, don't clash uh, among themselves or with the main application. And uh, this also enables you to have a customized plugin uh, application where you might not need some of the plugins to be there, like parsers or um, or a couple of other plugins that we're going to read. Um, uh, the one important plugin that is already there in the system is uh, the regex uh, URL filter plugin, which is uh, nothing but a regular expressions uh, to filter out any URLs that you don't want to crawl or you specifically want to crawl. Um, another plugin that we have uh, added is JavaScript rendering. So uh, this is something comes from the experience where you want to crawl some websites which has Ajax or a JavaScript requirement, or in case of deep web, you want to uh, crawl behind the login forms. So we provide this out of the box, uh, where given a stream of URLs, we uh, use the browser instance, uh, Selenium-based browser instance, and give you the stream of content out. Uh, which helps us to uh, sustain one browser instance for each iteration and reuse all the cookies and sessions for that iteration. It's fast, and yet it allows you to uh, go the Selenium way while you're inter we can interact with uh, the websites or you, know, you can even write your Selenium handlers uh, to customize how you want to crawl that particular page. Uh, the next one is, uh, I think already explained by uh, Thame, was uh, an alternate uh, output consumption strategy, which is through Kafka. So if you have your own ETL pipeline or you have machine learning or NLP parsers at the end, you can just use Sparkler as a fetcher resource and uh, enable the Kafka queue and attach your parsers uh, and machine learning models on top of that so that you can create an ETL pipeline out of it. Um, we are still working on the large messages uh, sending through Kafka queue, so there's yet to be, uh, there are a lot of enhancements that we are constantly working and are there as issues on GitHub. Uh, another, another key feature is uh, Tika, which is our universal parser. Um, as we talk about, we say like it 
parses everything and for anything that we feel it does not, we as a committer work towards it and add those parser extractors in Tika. I think that's the best way we, we should go around it. It's upgrading the open source community and having every all the important parsers at one place. And we use this in Sparkler. Um, another is like if you, so now I understand like if you have a lot of crawls in the database or uh, you, you have, uh, you're crawling in, in phases, you definitely want to understand how the crawl is going, is it making sense, or you just want to monitor the crawls in production uh, crawling. So for that, we have used Banana, uh, which works out of the box with uh, our solar index. And there you can see near real-time uh, crawling uh, statistics uh, using just normal searches or face hitting. Uh, in addition to that, if you have some particular customization to the Banana dashboard, which is specific to your crawler, uh, we have added the Sparkler UI module uh, in the project. So you can have your own customization. It will use Maven overlays to bundle it together with the Banana and ship it uh, to your web application. So it's like you have Banana, you can add up more things to create your own web application out of it. Uh, this is the current state of the Banana dashboard that looks like. Uh, so as you can see, there is... Uh, there is a search uh, box at the, at the top where you can write your queries and the other total number of documents that will show uh, index time. Here you can see the time series, like uh, at what time uh, the document was indexed. Uh, and here's a, some face search and other, like you can uh, bar graph with domains. So it's like a, a basic dashboard for any person to understand and get a feeling out of it. If you have any particular use case, you can, there are multiple panels in Banana, you can customize it and have it uh, working. Um, another is uh, deployment. So from the beginning, we wanted to solve the problem of uh, crawler deployment. Uh, it should be easy to work with. Uh, so for that reason, we have used uh, Docker and Juju Charms. Uh, we have a good video uh, uh, for Juju Charms uh, uh, of Sparkler deployment on YouTube, so you can easily search and go through with it. For Docker, uh, we'll use that in the demonstration that we'll do in the later half. Um, and yes, like uh, our vision was also to run short crawls or and, and large crawls, so uh, these deployments really help us to you know manage that that stuff. Uh, before we uh, go to the demo, I just uh, like to introduce the current use case of Sparkler. So we are using uh, this crawler for an EarthCube research project known as uh, Polar Deep Insights, uh, which is about mining the polar information from websites like NSIDC and uh, ha getting some deep insights out of it. Uh, a couple of challenges that we are facing and we want to implement uh, in Sparkler as a top priority is uh, uh, scoring crawl pages. So once we have all the crawl pages, like you can use uh, text similarity algorithms to uh, rank all those pages and uh, give it a score, maybe using naive base or cosine similarity. And there could be many more ML algorithms or NLP algorithms that you can use. Uh, that will lead to the focus crawling. Uh, if you, you can select you know, what part of the web you want to crawl. And the broader picture that we may give you is uh, uh, building a domain discovery system where given minimum information and some set of seeds, uh, the crawler intelligently finds uh, what part of the web it needs to crawl and derives insights from. So that's another research problem that we are working with. Um, apart from that, uh, definitely tutorials and documentations we are working on a lot. Uh, you would find a lot of good comments, a basic tutorial on GitHub right now, but you know you can uh, expect more documentations arriving soon. Uh, interactive UI, crawl graph analysis using SparkX, uh, or other graphics and other libraries. So we are still working on that to be integrated. And we definitely want to use the, the already built-in Nuts plugins in Sparkler. That's, uh, that's a good thing to reuse the uh, the important stuff that has already been built in past. Uh, with this, um, I'll let Tame to run the demo uh, with our Docker script to run Sparkler. Thanks, Karan. So uh, we're going to use a demo with Docker. Uh, we wrote a script, uh, script for making a Docker script for Sparkler. We called it Docker. So if you clone this uh, GitHub repository, so in bin directory, there will be a script called docker.sh. 
Let's uh, switch to terminal. Yeah, there it is. So, so what this script, uh, what this script does is uh, it will uh, look if uh, Sparkler is already built. If there is a container, if there is an image, if it if it doesn't exist, it will build. Uh, if if it sees if a container is running for this uh, particular image, uh, if it, it will reuse. If it doesn't, then it will start a container. So right now for demo, everything is working. So uh, I mean the build it is already built and so it is running. Yeah, yeah. So we can see some port forwards. Uh, so port. 8983, that's the fuller port, is mapped to 8984. We'll use it in the demo. So port 4040 Spark Master UI, that's mapped to 4041. Okay, so let's do docker.sh. So it said it found the image, it found the container, and it started. Uh, there is some basic help uh, printed here. Uh, to begin with, uh, let's check out our dashboard. Okay, so this is, I'm not sure you can see the URL. It is connecting to port 8984, which we exposed for Solar. Uh, there is a banana web application setting that is providing the dashboard. So right now you see uh, there, are no, there is nothing in the index. Uh, total documents is zero, uh, no activity. So let's start, let's start a crawl. Uh, so we also have a convenient sparklers.sh script. So it can do two activities. It can do inject or it can do crawl. So we don't have anything in the index, so let's do inject. So to inject, uh, so most of these are defaults. Let's set an ID. Uh, let's call it as Spark Summit East 17 demo. And so there are two options. So we can either inject a seed file, it should be a list of URLs, or we can directly specify some seed URLs. Uh, Let's select a few news sites. Let's say CNN.com. That's one of the sites we'd like to crawl now. Uh, let's say another site, uh, say BBC News. OK, so let's inject. So it injected, and it said, yeah, two URLs are injected. So now if we switch back to our dashboard, we see there are two URLs. Uh, they all in the depth zero. So if you look at the status, so they are not fetched. Uh, one from CNN and one from BBC.com. So let us run a crawl. Uh, we need to specify the job ID. So this is the job ID. It can take a bunch of parameters, but most of them it, it assumes uh, default parameters. So it, let us specify the iterations. So let's run for one iteration, which is the default. OK, so since there were two different hosts, it found out two part, it made two partitions. And it is fetching. And it's done. Now if you look at our dashboard, so we see uh, some URLs from CNN, from uh, BBC, CNN, and the outgoing links like money.cnn.com. So two of them are fetched. Uh, here we see in the depth zero, we have two links. That's, that zero is our feed URLs user provided. In the first step, we have 232 URLs. Let's do one more iteration. Uh, to make it short, I would like to specify, uh, I would like to restrict the crawler. Uh, let's. I'll, I'm going to tell it to pick only top, say, top five different hosts, or say top three hosts. We have one, two, three, four, five. Great, we have five. So top five, and in each of them, top n. So since I want it, I want it to end as soon as possible. So I'm going to restrict it to say fetch five pages in each of them. So if we don't specify it, it 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 will assume default values and it keep on. It takes a lot of time to fetch more resources. So since I said five, uh, five different hosts, so it made five partitions, and it is fetching. Great. So now let's switch back to our dashboard. It's still going on. So we should see some updates here.
separate. Cool. So now we have more URLs, and it fetched more resources. It, it has found more resources. So let's explore what it has fetched. Fetched. So here's a quick demo. So this is one of the resources, say CNN.com. Uh, yeah, we see 24 of them are fetched. So these are some analysis on the content we have got, cnn.com, the uh, top keywords or terms. So we have found, let me reload this dashboard. Because there was a filter applied. Yeah. OK, so in the second app, uh, it has found over 1,000 URLs. So we can run this crawler for a long time if you want to fetch more resources. Uh, I think, yeah, this is. It is the uh, it is the crawling is as easy as this. Just run a docker.sh and you get the crawler, and you can inject and crawl, and you can monitor what's going on in the crawler. You can see the trend in the time. So here, when you are run when the crawl is running for say hours or days, the bigger crawl runs for days or even weeks. So we can see the trend here. So that's a quick demo of our Sparkler. Now let's. Back to our presentation. Yep. If you have any questions, we'd like to take them. Yep. So one question I have about uh, uh, Sparkler. Uh, you mentioned that uh, are you using in a uh, crawling? like a Spark uh, executor. So how many executor uh, is based on the seed node? Uh, how many seed you have based on that you respond the executor? That's the one. Another one is uh, if uh, using Nudge, if they have distributed Nudge or uh, other uh, already process, have you tried that? And uh, what the performance you're seeing between using the distributed Nudge and then Spark, and why you went to the Spark route? OK, it's a great question. question I'll yeah. let Karanjit answer okay, this. Yeah, he, is, he has been running a lot of crawls recently, yeah. and he has this. OK, so um, for the first question, uh, when you say like uh, based on the seeds and executors, it's actually uh, based on the Spark tuning that you do and uh, limited to the computational resources you have on the system. For the crawls that I have run is uh, I try to uh, define multiple worker tasks and assign one executor in each of the worker tasks and let uh, so we partition it based on the t on the workers, and uh, the number of URLs we have, and we w so we take the hostname and partition based on the worker task and run it. So I for the cross that I have run is uh, I used one executor for each worker to handle it and to let that executor have the more computational power to fetch uh, any kind of resources. Like if there's any large documents coming in between, so that should uh, the executor should be able to handle it. Uh, for this, for your second question, um, a comparison uh, between Nutch and Sparkler, uh, I, I think that won't be fair at this point of time. Uh, Nutch is definitely a distributed web crawler, but it also multi-threaded as well, multi-threaded fetcher. So uh, we are just uh, distributed and we run in-memory computations. I have run uh, very uh, basic crawls. From now, from right now, I can tell. Sparkler can run very fast in, uh, in in very short crawls and large crawls, whereas Nutch fails to run fast in very short crawls. And for large crawls, we know that it's distributed and crawls billion of URLs in uh, in few days. Uh, we uh, are not doing a performance analysis, a performance comparison between Nutch and Sparkler as of now. Uh, we need some more enhancements to be done in Sparkler to be to be compared one to one. But, but yes, Sparkler does provide some good advantages over Nudge, uh, be it with the real-time dashboards or uh, with any short-term crawls that you want to do. Sure. Uh, another question, just very quick. Uh, on test analytics, you said you're providing uh, test analytics on top of it. So what other things you additionally uh, you're providing? I think you said you said the company. Um, oh, so, OK. So in, in my uh, company, we, uh, we had a whole machine learning pipeline where you get the 
web pages, then we can have extraction, we can do sentiment analysis, we can do a lot of uh, NLP, ML stuff, we can do classifications, extraction, yeah. We have a bunch of modules, you can just connect them, drag, drop, connect them, and you can make a pipeline. I have an esoteric question. Yep. One of the points you had on there is you wanted to mavenize uh, at least part of your build process. Is that, did I get that wrong? Uh, do you mean mavenizing the Nudge build system? Yeah, is that, I, yeah. Uh, yeah, I just caught that. In, in, in essence, what build system is it using that you're trying to get off of? Uh, yeah, so right now, Nudge has a, a deployment in Maven, but its plugins are not there in Maven repository. So if you want to pull Nudge plugins from Maven repository, it doesn't exist. So we started this effort. We have some very basic uh, uh, effort done for mavenizing the plugins. So the compilation, build, everything works. The test cases we have to fix, because the way tests are written in Nudge is old fashioned. Uh, some of them are unit tests. Some of them are integration tests. They're all mixed up. We couldn't just Yeah, that's why them. I don't use Nudge. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Any further questions? Okay, none. Okay, well, thank you very much. Please show your appreciation. Thank you. Thank you.